It's a beautiful sounding name, Wisteria Hall Flowery. Yes. But it did house the most insane of them all. <laughs> yeah. Now, who is insane in this group has nothing to do with that. <laughs> you sure? This is an honor of me personally, because I'm a huge fan. This is an honor of the Monty and the Faro show. I want to welcome the band, Wisteria Hall. Griggs and Jimmy Farrow. Glad to have you guys. Guys, uh, guys, I'm personally a huge fan, and I've been looking forward to the show for a very, very long time. And finally, we got the commitment. And you know what? That first song, everybody loved it. Thank it sounded guys. great. Thank, the, thank you. Guys. The family loved it. Everybody, you nice. know, saying the sound was great, and they really enjoyed the Appreciate song. It. Appreciate Big it. fans of your band. You guys should be very happy. It's always been the traditional closing song on this show yeah it's very relevant yeah you know there when you the go. credits pop up i hope you guys aren't shutting it off that's a very important <laughs> at, the, at the end credits yeah. of course they don't what is wisteria hall what is you want me well i can start and then you can film okay hit it 
It's a building at the Kings Park <laughs> <I> Psychiatric <laughs> Center. <laughs> now, it's a very ironic, it's a beautiful sounding name, Wisteria Hall Flowery. Yes. But it did house the most insane of them all. <laughs> yeah. Now, who is insane in this group has nothing to do with that. <laughs> You're sure? <laughs> but honestly. <laughs> Mike, he's roasting me here. Help me out. Oh, me my back. God. I'm getting I'm killed already. Go ahead. Tell him. Keep going. You're doing good. Right. Keep going. No, the King Spark, it's, they've had many buildings for many different types of patients. And yeah. this particular one held yeah. the most violent and psychotic mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. And we've heard interviews with people who right. work there. Right. Uh, Jimmy has personally spoke to some people who right. work there. Right. And right. Uh, we really felt it was a beautiful name with that ironic twist yeah. at the end. Yeah, it's beautiful on the surface, but what lurks beneath um, Wisteria Hall, the, the, the facility in general has some memories for me because a loved one that I was very close to uh, did spend a very brief time over there. Uh, I've always found the place charming. It's 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 abandoned, yet it it still reeks of once upon a time there was there was a lot of life here. So uh, you know, again, I like the artistic name of it, Mike. That's pretty much it. Wisteria Hall. I think it sounds good. And uh, when you came up, you when know. you guys came up with the name, yeah. right? Was it this whole long conversation, or was it just like Wisteria Hall? Well, oddly enough, and it's also based on Kings Park, there was a worker for many years there named King Peddler. And I think I told you this story. And I liked the name King Peddler. I thought it was like ironic, a king and a peddler. I thought it was kind of cool. So uh, we, we actually uh, gave the man respect. He was still, he's still alive, I believe. He's very old at this point. But hey, he's made it this far. And I had asked him, do you mind if we use King Peddler? And he was like, no, it's okay. The next day, Mike, he calls me. I don't know. I don't know about this. You know what I mean? Like he got nervous that we were going to use his name for a. Nobody. And by would the have way, known. I like that name. That's a really. Isn't cool it a name. cool name? But nobody cool would have known. Yeah, right. You know right. what I mean? Right. But out of respect for the fact that you know, I don't. I showed him respect. He wasn't comfortable with it, and I thought to myself, well, hey, Wisteria Hall is my favorite personal building to go to over there. It's it's the name of a flower. Yet look what was housed underneath yes. the petals, the mm -hmm. flower petals. Right. I found it a good name. You know. So basically, we went, we went and, with that. And most important. When you try to get a name, there's always some copyright, trademark. You come up with a great it. name, someone's got it. So this one was free and clear. Yes. I mean, there's a Wisteria Hall like florist right. that has nothing to do <laughs> yeah, with Want to get some flowers? Yes. All right. <laughs> now this is. I think I spoke with Farrow about this maybe a couple of weeks ago on air because it just it just hit me weird. First okay. of all, again, I've always loved the name Wisteria Hall, mm -hmm. and I actually love the logo. Yeah, but I have to. Un it has to be explained to me why the there's a snake, the snake in the Wisteria Hall logo. Yeah. Why yeah. did why put a snake in there? Well, first I want to say that Jimmy came up with the name Wisteria Hall, you know, based on his many experiences there, and I just loved it. it. Just rang and was nice and slick. The snake goes back to when we were first conceptualizing our music. In fact, the first CD we did with uh, Eddie Kramer yes was called indivisible which is very uh you know patriotic there was a lot of stuff and going on know, back during 2016 on <laughs> like, like if you look at my yeah. necklace it has a little don't tread on me snake right now, right it doesn't mean anything for political people no. you're gonna go in that direction no nope. it just means nope. actually hang it tough staying together whether it's us or uh, people in general. Or you, or you could actually just give me the real answer and you were looking for something to make a cool S, so you found a snake. He always thinks that because there's an S in Wisteria Hall. <laughs> yes. Mike's like, well, that's why you must have come up with a snake. I mean, after you want all, a, snake a kangaroo would look ridiculous it as an S. That was so so you're, you're right about that. You got us on that one. Yeah. Boy, how long have you guys been making music? Oh, man. Okay, I can actually nail this. Do you know what year it was? Because it was 2006 where we started to collaborate begin the, the ideas of days, yes yeah uh, uh, yeah me and jimmy I, I must say this but i don't want to bore anybody but <laughs> it's true we go back a hundred years that's true and no, over always, 30 and it was always right. some off and on playing whether we were at a, a park with a guitar or something or at a bar he would come up and join me at his own thing however when we started to record jimmy came in and just started laying down some tracks with me and it was just like a natural thing and it just I think it was like, uh, what do you always say? Like eggs and bacon? Yeah, well, it's organic. I mean, yeah. we, we just happen to have a good fit for each other. But the funniest part, Mike, was is, is that he didn't have a drummer, and he had a show. What was it, like three days yeah, later? Yeah, funny. He didn't really play the drums that I much. I never played. I, I was said, a vocalist. You know that for many so, years. Well, I, so you know, our drummer canceled out on us. I'm like, Jimmy, do you think he you could play the drums? Like, we gave him three days' notice. 
And uh, the guy pulled it off. In fact, there were people coming up to him saying, "Hey, I really like your drums." How long you been playing? And I was like a week. Like, <laughs> if, I, if I could tell, if I could tell a quick now? story, I hadn't seen Jimmy in a little while, and um, there used to be this like park where all the drug addicts would go hang out. But the one cool thing about the drug addict park was they had the, and I mean drug addict, kidding around all the pothead, I know what you mean, boy. Right? The boys chilling but the out. The one thing about the dudes. pothead park was, hey, there was always some hot chicks there. And, you know, oh, Monty's yeah. all about the chicks. So yeah. I used yeah. to go down there. And I remember it was raining. So everybody bolted from the park. And they all go into this house. And I said, the girls are going there. I'm going there, too. So this dude's, like, trying to impress the chick. And he's drumming. And... I didn't know if Jimmy could drum or not, but Jimmy, I, I, I think I might even said, Jimmy, get on You the volunteered drums. it. You actually yeah. instigated and you f- a contest between me and a guy yeah, who actually you, was you a tore, drummer. You tore him up. You uh, yeah, tore I did. him but up. But che- you know, Mike, I cheated, I though. It, Here, here's, I, oh, here's, the, here's the cheat, though, Mike. You know what I did? I played the drum solo from God of Thunder, Kiss Alive 2. Nice. I used Peter Chris. I was like, well, I think I got the basics. I think it goes like this. Right. And that was pretty much it. JB2 says, Eddie produced Hendrix and did the sound at Woodstock plus numerous other huge things in music. So tell the people out there your involvement with Eddie Kramer. Well, what happened was uh, we were looking to really just get, you know, we, we I, I don't want to call it classic rock, but hey, you know, there's roots. Uh, that's, we wanted to that's find fair. who is the preeminent guy who, that's who, done who, the kiss. Who is the man of Hendrix, classic rock? Zeppelin. Stones. Zeppelin. Beatles. So, he did all yeah. you need is love. So we uh, shot out an email to his place and they promptly ignored it. Right. And then As they know, should. A, little, a little persistence we sent. A, a, a sample, little? A lot. <laughs> How about a year's worth? So we sent <laughs> I it. swear, Mike, a year's worth of, of continuing to stay in touch. Was He's it Amanda? Like, yeah. Amanda, I know. Amanda was the secretary, wasn't that's she? Right. And, yeah, so then, that's right. You know, he says, he says this crack. He's like, oh, you know, I hear what you guys did. It's pretty good, but you could really use a producer. I'm yeah. Like, no, dude. That's, that's why, why we contacted. On with you. That's right. Us. Yeah. And then, like, we kind of didn't hear from him for a while, but me and Jimmy had this discussion. We're like, all right. One more try. Other, we we were about up, to stop. And we did call one more other try. people. Yes, Jack Douglas from Aerosmith. But also, Steve, was it Steve Thompson from the Eagles? Is that the right one? Right. Or, uh, what was, or was it uh, another fella? Uh, anyway, like, we were Ted trying Jensen, other times. Ted Jensen, the, right. Um, Steve Thompson was Mastery. from Guns N' Roses. I knew him too. So long story right. short, we did follow up. And finally, he's like, well, I said, please, we have it ready. We want him on the calendar. So he put us on the calendar. He put us on the calendar. And then After he, a year. And as he spoke to us, he was like, oh, our greatest friend. And we had these messages. And uh, him and Jimmy hit it off right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, he was magnificent. He was everything that his resume says he is. You knew right away that you were working with a legend. You knew right away. And I, I want to ask him, what is it that makes you get your end product? And he would, he just told me fairy dust. Mm-hmm. He was very proud of his capabilities, but he certainly, like the magician who doesn't tell the trick. Right. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, and the greatest moment of the whole process, which was only about 30 days with Eddie. I almost right. feel like making a film are 30 Days with Eddie because that's what it was. 30 days of a lot of work doing 10 tracks for the debut record. And my favorite part was when we did In My Dreams where he said, this is a, this is a hit. And he did reflect on wishing that it would, had been the 70s, the 1970s, because he felt that that song would have been absolutely... Yeah, no, he was right. He was you know. It and, was great and, working and, with and him. And it should note, as Jimmy says this, he's not one to like blow smoke. No, he's not giving fact, compliments out easy. Right. He's not going to just nope. be like, oh, everything you guys did nope. was great. No. Nope. But that's not yep. anything but the truth. So when he was complimenting, it was sort of like. It was nice. Like, wow. It's nice know, to hear great. that. It's like, tell, it's like Hulk Hogan telling you, you know, you lock up well, Mike. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I got, well, I got to tell you, like, you know, I think I told you guys that. Back in the day when I used an iPod, to put your music on my iPod yeah. because you guys were iPod worthy. And that, to Thank me, you. that was a serious thing. Thank like, you. I yeah. didn't put music on my iPod, right? Because I was working out. I wanted to listen to good music. One, two, three. One, two, three. Whenever I get to feel this way, have to find new words to say about a thing, the bad old days we used to know. Nights of winter turn me cold Fears of dying, getting old We ran the race, the race was won 
by running slowly Could be soon we'll cease the sound Slowly upstairs, faster down And to revisit stony grounds We used to know With every morning shilling spent Made no sense to leave the bed The battle days, they came and went Even in the fruitful years Yeah One in a bush, the other's land Take what you can before the man Says it's time to go Each to his own way, I'll go mine Best of luck with what you find For your own sake, remember times we used to know Unbelievable. Welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV. Wisteria Hall on the stage. Great job, guys. Uh, Thank this, you. They couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Listen, I've known you guys, I've known you both for a long time. You guys are like uh, a great pro wrestling tag team. How did you guys meet? Ooh, how did we meet? Play ball! Well, not really, no. Actually... And Mike, you remember the band, uh, Electric Sunset. I started he to was, talk to Bart when he was coming to the Sunset stuff. That was my first band is, a million years ago. We had a mutual friend <laughs> that ghosted us. Oh, he ghosted you. I don't care what he did with me. I don't give No, that's really <laughs> rude when people ghost you. <laughs> I hate that. Anyway. Oh, how you doing, here, Schmucko? Say, how you been? Anyway. Suffice to say, I heard Jimmy's music before I met Jimmy. We were sitting at a Burger King parking lot listening to cassette tape. I'm like, this is pretty good. Let's go see these guys. And um, first time I heard somebody say Johnny Law in a song, that was always my favorite expression. Uh, yes, I did use that phrase. So we met, and then we played softball. I'm like, Jimmy's going to play softball, the guy with the long hair? How yeah. the it's going to be there. Yeah, but the guy with the hair down to his ass is going to play softball on our beer, beer league team. You but know, he okay. shared the passion. Don't want to lose any of you guys with the boringness. But it's very important to know that really it helped organically speaking. Yeah. You know, we got to know each other. Sure. Many singing in the parking lot. I bring my guitar, you know, and just got to know each other and talked about things, songs that we liked. So there liked. it is. Wait, where's he going um, this? The average marriage last 10 years. Okay. So look, you guys have been around each other a really long time, oh, right? And loyal, <laughs> listen, loyalty is a big deal, right? How do you guys stay loyal to each other? I think it's just like a, a mutual respect. You know, we were into the same things, and uh, you know, I, I just kind of think that there really wasn't anything like that was thought out or thought like, you know, do we get sick of each other? I'm sure over the all these years, probably been like. This guy's an Islander fan, I can't think. Like, yeah, the hockey thing is probably our biggest problem with each other. I'm a Ranger fan, he's an Islander fan, so there you go. Hey, what friction? And, and Mike, Mike, about 100 years ago, like me and Jimmy actually got into a text fight over the Islanders. <laughs> over the Islanders? That's, that's our only funny. fight, I think. Isn't that like, our only fight? And it was like, who's my number? And I'm like, yeah, and I was so mad. He was, was doing, wow. he was doing a 1940s. Leave me alone. So, oh, my so then God. Five minutes later, I'm like, sucks. So five minutes later, I'm like, can we really lose the friendship? <laughs> over <laughs> over like, the Islanders right. and the Rangers. Like, right. And Jimmy's like, no. Right. No, of course not. But that's when, when those famous words, you think Deion Sanders gives you shit about your feelings? That's right. That's when I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. We're fighting over millionaires. They don't even know who we are. That's the time right. that we were doing, you know, of course, the song This Life, which Eddie was producing, Eddie Kramer, we couldn't stand his mix. 
So I had a real dilemma. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to have to tell Eddie Kramer, the guy who's worked with so many legends, that this mix sucks. And we did. I mean, you know, and Eddie at first didn't take it very well. He was like, what do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Eddie, the, the vocals are not balanced. It sounds ridiculously too bassy and all this other and he was upset. Oh, it's our song. I have to tell him because otherwise we're going to have to live with that forever after that, that, that version of it if we don't say anything. So oddly enough, well, it wasn't even an hour I got home after telling him it sucked. And he was like, get your ass back to the studio. We're going we're gonna to nail this. And so he agreed with me. And he, he was like, actually, he gave us a, an amazing mix. He wasn't like, who do, who do these guys? They don't know what that. He listened to it. Let's do it now. And I was like, oh, right. he said now. I got back in the car. We went back. Another four hours was worth every second of it because the final mix of this life mm -hmm. is beautiful. Yes. True art. Yeah. True art. We got what we wanted. We have a tremendous uh, studio guitarist, producer, bass player, and everything else. Uh, is it Clifton uh, David Broadbridge? Yes. Did I get Clifton that from David Canada? Broadbridge. He's, he was Eddie's understudy. That's how we found Cliff, the guy who plays the guitar in our current stuff and the bass and produces. He was Eddie Kramer's understudy. He's a genius. So we've stepped in twice. Pretty happy about it. I ain't changing my shoes. You've got such a variety. Uh, I'll tell a quick story before the boys send us out uh, with some music. Um, they're going to play two more songs. And I'm sure everybody would be happy about that, so I shut up. But I will tell you this. Uh, when Jimmy first uh, and Bart showed me the music from their first album, right, I loved it. It had a, To me, it had a nice 60s feel. Um, you know, This Life was on it. You know, um, So Riding High is the Monty and the Pharaoh theme song. So I remember when Jimmy first brought Riding High to me, he's like, check this out. And I was like... I, it's not that I hated it. I was shocked because it was so different. Right. And one thing about music that I always love about certain bands is that one song to another is completely different. But in this particular case, I, I made it clear to you, I wasn't happy with the change of music or style because I loved their first album right. so much. I was like, why didn't you just stick to that format? But I got to tell you, obviously, I'm not a musician and I'm not an artist because those guys nailed it with that second album, which is equally as uh, enjoyable. So uh, I want to thank you guys again, and uh, it's an honor. And, uh, you know, all I could say is bring us home. Something with nothing now we leave. So you're with me for a while, but now you're gone, and you know. Asunder, our time's been swept aside. So you with me for a while, but now you're gone, and you know wherever you go, I'm not far behind. I'm not far behind. Cause I want and need your love Can I ask if it's enough? Are you feeling the same way? Are you now? Don't leave me now So now that it's
this over Did she care at all? Cause you know Wherever you go I'm not far behind I'm not far behind So here we go again Here comes the rain again Here we go again Here comes the rain again Find the cost of freedom buried in the ground. Mother Earth will swallow you. Lay your body down. Tell heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. Can you tell a green field from a cold steel rail? A smile from a frown. Do you think you can tell? Did they get you the train? Same old ground Have we found